Hello everyone and welcome to the Delivered Social Podcast. I am super pleased to introduce Alexis from Team Mountain UK and Portsmouth Tea. Alexis, welcome to the Blue Sofa. Pleased to be here. Really excited to have you on because you're probably one of the very few really brilliant storytellers that I know with your brand. The way you tell stories about Tea Mountain, your tea knowledge is just out of this world. So okay. I'm really looking forward to sort of asking you a few questions. But for people that don't know you and don't know Ports of Tea and don't know Tea Mountain, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, basically, um, been going for a couple of years, uh, based in Gosport. And <laughs> <laughs> no thought comment. I'd, thought I'd just drop that in there early. Um, but seriously, Portsmouth Tea, uh, it's been developed for the hard water in our area. Uh, there's a long history to it. I mean, Portsmouth is bound in with the story of tea. And the more I found out about it, the more it just seemed ridiculous. And there was a Portsmouth tea a few years ago. And this has just been brought back out to try and celebrate the fact that we love tea in Portsmouth. Where did this passion of tea come from? Because your knowledge is just phenomenal. So it, it, where did it stem from? It, well, I, I grew up in a household where there was always the kettle on the go. There's always tea going. And I've always loved tea. But it really struck home when I was based out in China through work. And you know what it's like. You're in an office. There's the usual jar of coffee, box of tea, and a kettle. Well, I just asked, you know, where do I make my tea? And they said, well, haven't you got your own? And I was like, no. And I realized that everybody in the office brings in their own tea, pre-made which kind of fascinated me even more. And I've, I soon rapidly realised that I knew, what I thought I knew about tea was nothing in comparison to these people in the office. And so I was making a nuisance of myself and saying, I'm going to try a bit of your tea, I'm going to try a bit of your tea. Got to about the third week whilst I was there. And normally at the weekend, I'd sort of plan what, a, you know, a, a site to go and see and, places to visit and all that kind of stuff and somebody just said to me what you have got planned for this weekend and I hadn't had anything planned and they said did I want to go to visit a tea market because they found out well, it was hard to hide the fact that I liked trying teas and obviously I said yes so it turned out that this this lady her husband was a tea merchant and we went to a tea market now when I was thinking of a tea market, I was thinking of a few little stalls and things like that, and you, know, but more like wholesale stuff. Yeah, I wasn't expecting something kind of like the size of West Key in Southampton, full of tea and tea traders. And how every... many traders are we talking about? Oh, hundreds. Wow. Okay. Hundreds, literally hundreds, and it was. I literally spent all day there. We were going around and I found out about the six types of tea and sampled these different types of tea and how you should serve tea. And it got to mid-afternoon and we were served up two cups of tea. And I say cup and they're about this size, which is a pretty standard size when you're in China. And they both look very similar and they taste very similar. But then I was told that one was worth $10 for 10 grams and the other one was like $180 for 10 grams. And I was asked to differentiate between the two. I'm pleased to say that I got it right. I managed to sort it out. But then that's when it, it really hit home that whatever you can say about wine and the way you talk about wine, you know, who's grown it, the terroir, the climate, the position on the hillside even, can be, is exactly true for tea as well. Wow. And I was hooked. And so for the next 10 years, every time I came back from China, I had a big haul of tea with me as well, which um, I just love drinking. What amazes me about your product and the way you sell what you sell is there's so many people out there who produce a product and just put it on the shelves. Mm. You have done so much research and development into your tea, which speaks volumes. And, you know, especially when you talk about cost points and, you know, whether you should pay extra for quality, when it's had this much research and development and commitment poured into it, of course you should. Yeah, absolutely. Do, does that ever become a question that you get asked whenever you go to wholesalers or different companies who are looking for a tea? 
Um, so what do you mean, me asking them or them asking them? Them asking you. Uh, so if they say, oh, you know what, we're fine with our tech lease, what, what's your sort of reaction? <laughs> I generally walk away. <laughs> <laughs> because in all honesty, if, yeah, so on that point, when I do, you know, looking for new customers and places to sell my tea, it's, it's generally um, self-selecting. So, and this is no disrespect to these people because they've got businesses to run and I, under, I perfectly understand that. But they're talking about a business and they're looking at that bottom line. They're yeah. not looking about the quality of the product. And basically at that end of the market where the cost is the important bit, they ain't going to buy my tea. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to hide from the fact that my it, it, it's not cheap, but, but it's it, quality. That, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for decent stuff, but it's not just the actual product itself. It's got what's gone into it. So it's the people in the background. So the teas are ethically sourced, sustainably grown. It's helped them from smallholders, from wherever it's grown. Uh, and it's helping those communities as well as helping, hopefully helping this community. Yeah. I, and, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'm trying to sort of get people to appreciate better quality tea. You know, there's so many coffee shops out there and people are willing to wait five, ten minutes for a cup of coffee. Yeah, I've actually had people say to me, oh, it takes too long to brew a cup of tea. Three minutes. Really? Yeah, seriously. I've actually had that as a, uh, we're not going to take loose leaf tea, for example. It takes too long. Yeah, it takes longer to go and make a fancy coffee than it does to brew the tea. By the time they've taken the money or the payment or whatever, the tea's probably done, to be mm -hmm. perfectly honest. So I know from the other point of view, when you were talking about wine, obviously I worked in hospitality before, so yeah. we did a lot of wine tastings. I mean, to be honest, it was mainly just to get pissed. <laughs> but you could taste the difference between the cheap stuff yeah. and the quality stuff. Now, the, the, the fortunate area you have with wine is if you're a restaurant or a bar, you stock a range. So you do yeah. have your cheap range, you then do have your higher end. We bumped into each other at LinkedIn Local, I think it was about two years ago, and you gave me a tea bag yeah. and said, take this and try it. I'd not drank tea for years. I, I, I'd just been a coffee person for the last 10 years predominantly. I took your tea bag home, I drank that tea, and since then I drink tea now. Um, I do still have coffee. Coffee's sort yeah. of my morning go-to. I drink tea at least twice a day now. Yeah, It's your fault. But in the same light, I have not not drank anything other than ports of tea since. So Glad to hear when it. it comes to quality and it comes to taste, but also it's just, we're in Portsmouth. I yeah. would feel weird now not drinking ports of tea. Yeah. Every time we have a client in this office and they ask for tea, I tell them, you've got ports of tea. You haven't got tech leads, you haven't got PG tips, you've yeah. got ports of tea. And I think that's something that's really cool. So when you talk about helping out communities, you're also so focused on our community here as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I, I like to support all communities in, in the area. Um, <clears throat> so just um, signed a deal with uh, Portsmouth and Community where I'm their official supplier now. So, or Pompey in the community, sorry. Uh, so I'm, I'm their official supplier. So you will soon be able to buy Portsmouth tea on the site with them. You know, and that helps them grow, you know. Um, there are other places as well, like a couple of local schools. Um, so schools is really interesting. How how schools? Because is that more uh, through education? Is that for the teacher staff rooms? Else? It's what happens is that the schools have it branded with their, so it's the Portsmouth Tea Box, uh, and they get their logo on it and their colours and whatever and a bit about the school. And what happens is the parent staff association sell it at their Christmas fair and their summer fair and things like that. And it helps raise funds for the school. As it happens, one of them, one of the schools, the actual school bought 20 boxes off the PSA and they've used it when they've had VIPs come down wow. and they've given them a, presented them with a box. So, it, you know, it, it helps, you know, and if anything to help, you know, and it's a good way to help, particularly with charities that you know, once they're branded with it, they can self-generate. You know, they've actually got something which is making money for them. Yeah. So they're not having to rely on you know, 
people sort of donating, if you like. And also keeping money in the community. Exactly. You know, supporting each other, which this city is all, is all about. Exactly. How, how did China happen? How did, how did you end up working in China? <clears throat> so I was, um, I don't know if you ever stopped being a designer, I was a graphic designer. Um, went to Portsmouth College of Art, graduated as a technical illustrator, but specialised in typography. Worked in publishing for, what, 25, 26 years? Uh, starting off as a junior designer, ending up managing a team of 65 around the world. And part of that was in 2009, uh, the company I worked for had bought a big agency over in China. And it was my duty to integrate that team into the global team. So, and that was that was good. You know, so I looked after teams from Houston, New York, London, Singapore, Manila, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, amongst other places. But that's that's where the teams actually were based. When you went over to China the first time, did you ever realise that this was going to happen? This journey with no. team out and water police. And no, and so to end that story of how I got into it, that's how my passion for, for tea really sort of blew up, if you like. How I got actually into the tea or running Tea Mountain was that uh, 2018, I left that employment. Um, and I kind of just carried on doing a little bit of what I was doing before. You know, graphic design, event publishing, things like that. And a very long story short, I it got to lockdown and I was just doing all sorts of stuff to try and keep myself busy. I think as everybody was, to be honest. But what happened was I, was, I had just started working with a business coach just before lockdown, ostensibly to grow my graphic design business. Mm -hmm. And it got to post lockdown and he said, right, well, let's really get going and you need to go out and see people and grow this business. And I said, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I don't know if I want to be doing this kind of work anymore. I think a lot of people thought that after COVID, didn't they? Exactly. Yeah. And he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I've got no idea. <laughs> Follow your passion. Yeah. And so what he said, actually, and I've, I've, I've told this story so many times to so many different people, but it was literally to just get a blank piece of paper and draw two vertical lines on it. So you've got three columns. And in the first column, write down everything that you're passionate about. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be watching TV, going for long walks, travel, design, everything. Write it down in there. Middle column, everything that you're, you've got skill at, you're good at doing. So again, like design or if you, you know, in terms of skill, you know, making a cup of tea, talking to people, getting deals, that kind of stuff. And then over the next six week period, he, he helped me and guided me from selecting something from column one, combine it with something in column two to make a viable business in column three. And that's where Tea Mountain was born. Subconsciously, did you, do you think that was always there? Do you think you always, or yeah, was well, it sort of born? If it, it wasn't for COVID, do you think this would have happened? It may well have happened, but probably would have taken longer. It might have happened in a different way as well, because I always thought I'd want to run a bar or a or a restaurant or, or something like that, something in, in hospitality related, but something very sort of close to my heart. And, you know, when you're younger, you kind of think, oh, yeah, you know, like, oh, I'll own a, a, a brewery or I'll, I'll, I'll run a, you know, a really good restaurant, you know, that kind of thing. But then when it came to tea, it kind of thought, yeah, why, this is, this is it. You know, why not? And, um, you know, I'm not saying it's been easy, but it's it's something that I, I, I get up in the morning and I love doing. How often do you sort of walk past restaurants or cafes and see your tea there or, or know and you can walk past them? How, how much pride does that give you? Oh, loads. I mean, I'm just looking at a place over there that's old, you know, so. I mean, yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Um, the other thing I want to talk about, you were involved with something called the Leafies. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, okay. So the Leafies is run by the International Tea Academy and that's kind of so following my passion i then thought well let's just get some qualifications in this are there such things as qualifications in tea and so i joined the uk tea academy and 
you know, they've got various stages. So there's one which is kind of like for tea enthusiasts and there's one for professionals and I've sort of completed that. Then there's one at that, which is where I'm studying for at the moment, which is like your master's. Anyway, um, what sign time for that is lots of tea tasting, lots of looking into the history of stuff, but it's also the actually looking into how the different, you know, the differentiation of one tea from another, how it's grown, who's grown it, you know, the the whole process from beginning to end, from plucking, and even to the extent of is it just the bud? Is it a bud and a leaf, bud and two leaves, what do they do with it, you know, how long is the withering process, how long is the, you know, do they roll it before or after drying, it's that kind of stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's I mean, it's pretty, the, the, the higher you get, the more stringent the, the pass mark, should we put it? Yeah. So you need to know your stuff. So if anybody says that they're, they've been, they're a tea sommelier from UK Tea Academy, and there are a couple of other academies around the world as well, but if they're from there, you know that they know their stuff. Yeah. It's like the knowledge, you know, with the taxi drivers in London. Yeah. It's, it's that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, just on our one of our uh, social groups or something, we said, anybody want to come and help out? A bit short-handed. So I went, yeah, why not? And so I went up to help with the so I what I was was a support brewer. So there was the lead brewer who mm -hmm. would be create you know, brewing the teas for the judges, for the judges to then taste. And there's about 300, 325 teas or something from around the world. And you know, they get feedback on how their tea is and all, if they ask for it, by the way. Uh, if they and all that, but my my role then was just kind of helping that chief brewer make sure the tea is done properly. So everything he needs, measuring, pouring. So the, doing tea properly. Well, what does that What does that mean? Because for me, it's chuck it in a cup, pour some water on it, a bit of milk. What's, what's... Yeah. So when when you're in a so when you're doing a taste a professional tasting or if you're judging, for example, every tea has to be on the same level. Okay. So that means same quantity of tea, water, time. So it's calculating, you know, because one one tea company might say, oh, use, you know, use a heat teaspoon of these leaves in a cup of water. Well, that's fine. But when, if you've got a teacup and a teaspoon, how does that differ from what I've got okay. to the next person? So it's actually making sure that, you know, it's usually three grams but sometimes they stipulate two and a half grams. So it's making sure that, you know, if you increase it to three grams, that everything accordingly is, is goes along with that. And then what, what, what happened was by the time I got home that evening, I had another message to say, can you come back and be one of our chief brewers tomorrow? Which I thought, okay, that's good. Wow. I must have done something right. Because <laughs> it's really kind of nerve wracking, really. You've got some of the, the great and the good in the tea world there who, I mean, I mean these guys are, yeah, there, right? that, yeah. I mean, they've, you know, I'm, I'm talking about that my business has been going for what a couple of years, and I've, you know, I've always liked tea. These guys have actually been involved in tea all their lives. Wow. I mean, some of them have actually literally grown up. I mean, seriously, one of them has actually grown up on a tea estate in China. Her family are like X generation down. She's grown up with it. She runs a tea business as well. I mean, they just can't beat that. Guy. Like, yeah, and it's like, <laughs> but the taste, you know, she, they, they know the, the, the smell, where it's grown, everything about it, you know, and they, they really appreciate that stuff. And actually, and it's worth mentioning about the difference in those people. There's one, um, one of the winning teas at the, at the final award. So just to finish that story, actually, I end up going back to be one of the brewers at the awards ceremony itself. So after the awards, there are 25 awards given. Afterwards, there was a tea tasting. And so you had these tea tea growers as well this time, you know, seeing their teas being presented. And you've got to make sure that their teas being served <laughs> properly, basically, because they say, oh, you've made this wrong. You know, there's that pressure, yeah. basically. But um, it, was, it, was, it was good. But the point being is there was one, one um, person that went to collect an award 30 second this 30 second generation in tea like not third generation 
32 generations they've been growing tea that long. <laughs> I, I was sitting there kind of figure out how long that was actually, and I, but I don't know what. That's, that's a massive tea bag, that. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that is. Uh, I'm really curious when it comes to stuff like that because that is just so niche and like you couldn't just chuck any judge and go oh you know what short today and you no chance because no. i wouldn't have a clue but i literally wouldn't have a clue so how how did you went obviously it must come from when you went to the tea markets in china how how, how did you learn what you were looking for were you guided through that process or did you just naturally pick it up that was a bit of both actually so it's picking up reading about it seriously <laughs> um and then as i say you know doing these learning about it really i mean there are so many books out there once you start looking and then when i actually went on started my course realizing that the person that's teaching me is the one that wrote some of these books wow and that's like okay that's not bad yeah that's a pretty good teacher <laughs> yeah 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 so um and then you know just as i say just i'm just fascinated with history as well so which, which kind of helps you know, it's interesting talking to a couple of the other people who are in a sim similar role to me. They love the the making of the tea bit, but they actually hate the actual history of it, and they just couldn't. Okay. They can they couldn't get it to stick. They were just I said, really? That's the I found that integral. I found that the history of it is what makes the tea. You know, and then when somebody comes up with a a, a new way of doing tea, you're kind of interested because there's kind of a progression going on there and you kind of think mm, that's good so leading from that how much how much time and development spent for you to develop ports of tea because i mean there must have been when you're starting new products and products that you tried you put this isn't right how many times did it get to get i mean you must be really happy with the recipe now but how much time did it take to perfect so with that there was a, i found literally i literally stumbled across it a what was a recipe for portsmouth tea um and i thought i'd try it and it got tweaked a little bit but that's that's what it was really i mean as i say there used to be a a company a few years ago in portsmouth um, based literally just around the corner from here that used to produce it and i've still got one of the old you know, not was it tin tins that it was in you know and that was that was kind of the inspiration if somebody's done it before why can't it be carrying on now and i you know i have since found out that the person doesn't live around here anymore and that's pretty much what happened you yeah. know but it was it was it's just fascinating and you kind of think why why stop it you know if Yorkshire can have their tea. Why can't we have ours? <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have any in here, so be very proud to know that. Yeah. Neither did Guildford, by the way. Guildford yeah. got ports of tea. Oh, so I'm glad all the Guildford it. clients are very confused when they uh, yeah. see ports of tea, but they've got no choice. Yeah. Um, you talk about um, the tea markets you've been to. So obviously, the networking there can be really interesting because you're, you're all enthusiasts of tea. Yeah. yeah. One of the other things you do really well is you seem to be at every event anyway, regardless of tea events <laughs> or networking. Yeah. When you go to networking events, how do you, I mean, because you're, you're, you're not pushy at networking events. You're not come by this, which some people are. Mm. You do it in a very natural way. You tell a story, which is much more, you know, you are a natural storyteller with your brand, which is great. What do you find in terms of which networking events you should go to? How do you differentiate? I, I need to be at this one or I need to be at that one. How do you decide? Okay, so one, one of the things that I do is um, white labelling. In other words, I can put a company's branding, message, logo, whatever, on a pack of tea. Now, so you know, with my design background, it kind of fitted naturally. And that that I, that happened again by accident. I was promoting the virtues of Portsmouth Tea at one networking event, and one person came up to me and said, "That's great, but could you put my logo on it as well?" I said. I can't see why not, but you know, I'll have to charge you for some design work. Goes, yeah, that's fine, and that's how it was born. And I thought, well, there might be something in this. And you know, so you've got a, particularly for this area, you've got a quality tea, you're getting good design work, and it's different, it stands out. It's not another pen, 
It's not, you know, um, you know, at the time of, there were loads of flash drives. People would give you little thumb drives, you know, things like that. Or, or mugs. So you've got the travel mugs, but why not have something to go in the travel mug? So don't stop getting those things. If you've got a travel mug, put some decent tea in it. And the point is, and this is what I would say to people is, is that, you know, you've got five minutes out from your desk. You've got five minutes. to You're looking at the tea, so it's got your logo on it. If you've got a message on there, that's kind of reinforcing that brand awareness of whatever business you're in, particularly if it's a box of tea rather than a little sachet. And that kind of took off. And that is a large chunk. So when I'm going to these networking events, you know, I, or anything really, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to see the same faces again and again and again and again. Um, as much as I like them, I mean, I, you know, and I do see these people. Yeah. And in fact, you actually do kind of see, bump into a lot of people. But sometimes I walk into a room, it happened to me earlier this week, I walked into a room and out of the what, 15, 20 people, I only knew two people, and one of those is the one that invited me. And that's kind of, that's great. That means I haven't heard about my product, what I'm doing. And it's a new audience. It's a new audience, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you're probably finding out now, it's difficult to shut me up once I start talking. (laughs) You're very good at, you're very good storyteller. That's what I would say. Okay. I think you very naturally bring across, because there's a lot of people in networking, you all know, that they're so... Look, networking events are there to promote yourself. That, hey, that's what they're there yeah. for. But some people take it to buy this. Yeah. No, that's that's no. You get to know the person. I feel like the way you you sell bottles of tea, you do that really naturally. You've got proof is in the pudding. You haven't just gone. I'm gonna sell a tea. Well, I'm always thinking about what. How is it going to help them? You know, because if if the way I look at it is, if their business is doing well, they're going to buy more. Yeah. Right. And if I've helped them do that, then they're going to buy more from me. That's the way I look at it. And at the same time, it's, you know, and pardon the pun here, but it's a tasteful way of promoting their business. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's not something which they're going to... It, it gives pleasure as well, to even to the person. So once that person in the business has got it, so the tea, so they've got a box of tea, they've given it to, I don't know, one of their best clients, that client is then going to enjoy it as well. You know, so why not? So, I mean, I think I told you about this story um, last time we were in. And stay agents, like, you're getting it now. So, stay agents. So, obviously, when you move into a new house, rented, or you buy a new house, it's a lovely little box yeah. off, sort of essential, you know, a little bottle of milk, bottle of beer, tea, yeah, and coffee. Why on earth do they give you a PG tip? Why on earth is it not ports of tea? So a family or students or whoever have moved into Portsmouth, we've got ports of tea, yeah, and we've given them another tea. Yeah, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Well, that's one of my things. I mean, I, I, I do go to a property network, Portsmouth Property uh, Connect, and what I say to them is, I've put proper tea into property. Love you know, that. Yes, it's, you know, and. To be fair, there are a few. It's a great way to like say, you know, if it's, it's a family who's not from Portsmouth, yeah, and they call stand, course of what's what's that? Exactly, wow, we've got our own branded tea, and especially if it is that estate agent and they've got their logo, exactly. on it, whoever they are, yeah, it's a selling point. There it's are adding a value, of, yeah. And the other one, actually, uh, so my best clients are in no particular order IT companies, and they like the puns on that. It's IT estate agents and travel agents makes perfect sense though all of those but the the um with the travel agents it's exactly the same thing you've got home sit down have a relax think about your next holiday or what some were doing uh, before the summer holidays they were actually say every take tea with them on holiday because they don't like what's going to yeah. when they get there so why not give them as part of your service, some tea, a little pack of tea as part of the service. And it all makes sense. And I think it's, it's particularly Portsmouth, we're all about supporting the community. Yeah. What better way to sell the city by giving a product which is yeah. a body to our city? Yeah. You know, it's great. So we are almost at the end of the year. 
Christmas is coming. Yeah. What, what happens with, I mean, is there Christmas teas? What, what, what happens with yeah. Christmas? I mean, I've, I'll be attending quite a few Christmas markets uh, from, well, from a couple of weeks' time, actually, all the way up to Christmas, various places. And I have my Christmas teas out there. So there's a black tea, there's a green tea, and a chocolate orange tea. So if you've ever had a, you know, the, cho the classic Terry's chocolate orange and had a sip of tea afterwards, that's exactly what it tastes like. The green tea, it's uh, nice and sweet. It's got bits of chocolate in there, a bit of rum, whatever. And the black tea is kind of classic Christmas, sort of cloves, pepper and orange. And it's, um, yeah, they, they normally go down pretty well. You know, at, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of puns in this. Oh, I know, I can't <laughs> help it. You've got something like tea quality, you know, so quality street, you yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, and you know, that's that's what's happening this Christmas, and then I'll also have some other looking forward to next year. There's a few uh, doing my uh, chocolates again, which I did this year, so that's handmade chocolates. Well. Wow. Uh, with tea infused centers so some of these a couple of these the chocolate orange and the green christmas tea actually made it into the to be fondant centers in the middle of some chocolates portsmouth tea was in one of them uh earl gray so uh so these like perfect gifts for christmas or these gifts people should buy for themselves uh so that with the chocolates that would be as gifts probably but i, I mean i I, I'll get through them as well, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you like chocolate and you like tea, why wouldn't you? I think at Christmas it's, it's tradition, isn't it? You just plonk it on the table. Exactly. You go. Yeah, exactly. So markets and events. I mean, there must be so many yeah. different markets that you get invited to and you do. So is there any more that are coming up? Yeah, I mean, uh, and no particular order. There's uh, number four boathouse where uh, Love South are running their indoor Christmas market. There's the Powder Monkey one in mid-December at their winter market. Mm -hmm. There's um, Portsmouth High School. There's um, Peter Green over in Romsey. They asked me to go over. Is that for Romsey tea? Or just... No, just Christmas teas, yeah. Portsmouth tea, um, some of the uh, Chinese teas, you know, and uh, something which, uh, I don't know if I can talk about it now, but um, I'll be launching a range of tea from Nepal in the next sort of week or so just in time for for Christmas actually well wow where's where's that come from it's uh it, basically I met a, these two tea growers I was at a tea conference and I got chatting to these guys and it turned out that one of them was one of the keynote speakers which I I didn't know at the time and I was just fascinated with the whole story of their families and they were third generation tea growers and basically in this particular village, there were five of them, five of these families growing tea. And they were kind of competing and there wasn't much infrastructure there. So what happened was they combined forces, created a cooperative, and they're now producing some award-winning teas and selling it around the world. And I'm one of those lucky people that's going to be selling their teas. Wow. Um, so I've got six of their teas. One of them is from the highest tea garden in the world in the foothills of mount everest and that's incredible isn't it? yeah and that's um and it's great and i kind of said to them oh, i'd be great if i could come and visit this place and they said well why don't you that's a great way to get yourself a holiday mate. That's a... well <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> this is it and it's visiting the various tea plantations you've been before no, i've never been not to nepal and um basically i'll be running a tour out there uh, next april wow so if anybody out there is interested, it would be the opportunity to uh, see these tea gardens, pick some tea, process it, learn about it, but spend some time with the community and they will, you know, taste some local food and find out about where the tea actually comes from. I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. How, how long are you going to be out there for? It's going to be about a week. It's a bit longer, week to 10 days. I'm still fine-tuning it at the moment, so this is why I'm a bit sketchy on the details, but uh, you'll see on my socials in the next sort of, in about a week or so's time, a 
about the, the costs and the dates and all the rest of it. And when will the Nepal two be available to buy? In about a week or so. Ready, well. ready yeah, for I'm Christmas. just I'm literally just packing it oh, at the moment. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Alexis, if anyone's interested in getting their hands on Ports of Tea, yeah, how do they get hands on? Well, the obvious one is the website. So portsmouth-t.co.uk, straight there for Portsmouth Tea. Um, follow me on socials, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok as well. And then you'll be able to buy it on TikTok soon. So watch this space. That's going to be live in a week or so. Um, there's a lot happening at the moment. Everything's bubbling under, and it'll all just come out. <laughs> Very exciting. Alexis, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Ah, it's been great. Loved thank it. You. All right, cheers.